hello and thanks for checking out the video today was going to be a little bit humdrum really um, just a uh, bit of a hike do a few reckeys on potential future wild camping areas um, a nice little overnighter um, things have gone a little bit awry because at the moment the UK is being battered by storms um, and predominantly beechwoods in this area and uh, it's not the best place in the world to be during a windy night so I might have to uh, make a few plan changes on where I'm going to stay try and find a, an area that's um, less potentially risky really Charcoal production, methinks. some kind of pagan deities. Frog spawn in a track puddle. It's a bit weird. trying to sum up this uh, area here it's uh, uh, all this woodland is access land which is great um, it's a very convoluted boundary and um, we're in a sort of peninsula of woodland here which potentially would be you know you could enjoy it but um, because it's jutting out it's surrounded by fields so you'd like to get agricultural traffic um, you know disturbing your day and your night so um, yeah, it's possibly, possibly a no-goer. Okay, nice and peaceful I thought it was here, but some people obviously have hunting rights. Um, so yeah, time to move on.
shots fired yet. turned into a bit of a marathon now but I'm just not comfortable with all this beach around and trying to find somewhere better really to spend the night than under a load of beech trees I feel the wind picking up a little bit let's hope it's worth all the extra walking Yeah, it's, uh, it sounds pretty windy here, um, but I'd rather be here than the beech forest. This is a very small valley area of conifers. Uh, I, knew, I knew about this place, so I kind of made a beeline for it. Uh, and it's a, the valley kind of runs north-south, so because we're in a westerly flow and the storms are coming from the west, um, I'm hopeful that uh, it won't, the wind won't channel up the uh, valley and make things worse. I'm hoping it's coming more from the west, uh, the wind, so you know, the valley might cut some of it out. Um, and of course, when you're within the woodland, the wind is, is less anyway. Um, it's just that I'd rather be under these wibbly wobbly conifers than um, slightly less reliable beech trees, that's all. I suspect everybody's got their scary beach forest story. Um, mine was sort of last year, late summer. I was out for an overnighter. And it was similar to today really, you know, sort of probably wind gusts of 45, 50 miles an hour, you know, nothing majorly really. Um, and I was just finishing up setting up and there was this almighty crack followed by a crashing sound and then an almighty thud on the ground. You know, I'd like to be able to say, I, felt the ground shake but that's probably an exaggeration but certainly parts of my body were shaking after that and you know no more than 25 yards away um, a beech tree had decided to let go of a massive limb uh, yeah and it came crashing down yeah needless to say um, that, that night the uh, it wasn't a very good sleep that night during the storm Let's have a quick word with a new neighbour. Hello mate.
this is going to be a challenge. It's a bit dark and dank this valley and everything's sopping wet. More steam than smoke at the moment. Like a sauna. Take two. I was a bit lazy with the fire, I ended up using two of the cotton waxed cotton wool pads, uh, my fire lighters, normally one does the job. Just pure lazy, everything's sopping wet in this sort of dank valley and I should have taken the extra time to strip back the bark and baton down some thicker pieces of timber to get to the inner core bits which are drier, uh, just nice thin pieces like that, gives you a dry bit of kindling to get started but uh, I was lazy and uh, Paid the price with two fire lighters. I'm going to make a start on dinner tonight um, because in this dark, dank uh, valley, in this dark conifer forest, under dark stormy skies, everything seems to be getting dark. So uh, while well, we can still film, we'll start dinner, which is a dal. Um, so this is some ginger to go in. I've battened in half a couple of uh, sticks here. And um, because you've got to chop up the, the ginger very finely, there's bits falling down all over the place. Yeah, you've got to chop the ginger up quite finely. It's a sort of temporary chopping board, really. But not a very straight one, or not a very flat surface, as you can tell. But it gives you half a chance to really mince up the ginger. So as finely chopped as possible, that is. <laughs> Thank you. 
smoke. The wind's, the wind's blowing the smoke all over the place. But not often in the right direction. So there's four or five quite large cloves of garlic in there and a small amount of tea, you know, say a teaspoon of ginger that's um, been chopped up as finely as we can when we're camping in the woods. And I'm just gonna soften that down with some oil. It's a bit of oil and probably use a bit of water and we'll add some more spices in a minute. But we'll, we'll just get that going while the fire's cooperating. The garlic and ginger are just beginning to soften. Just gonna put a splash of water in with it. It's starting a sort of misty rain now as well, so it'll make it even harder to control the fire with the wind and the damp wood. So into that, um, I'm going to try and make a paste now. So the spices which are already mixed up at home, cumin, coriander, turmeric, um, garam masala, some chilli flakes to, to your own taste, you know, depending on how hot you want it. Um, so they can all go in there, they're pre-mixed at home, keep it simple. I say a splash of water and some oil in there we try and make heat it up and make a sort of a curry paste an on-site curry paste so just heat it through all the spices so uh, they're beginning to release their, their flavor I get and they I guess their flavor and their aroma and we've got some lentils here so these are red lentils and you know they're pretty handy ones to use because they only take about 15-20 minutes to cook through you know the, the lentils are the easier for for camping some of the other pulses some of the other dried pulses require you know 45 minutes on a rolling boil to remove toxins and things like that whereas you know these well lentils um, don't require that and these red lentils are actually cooked uh, just a little bit quicker than others as well so we're going to cover those a bit more perhaps than twice the amount of water as there is lentils so volume wise it's like two parts water or two and a bit parts water to one part lentils get those on the heat we'll put the lid on those and bring them up to a boil for a minute or so and then try and control can give a controlled simmer as they cook through. A little bit difficult today with the wind and the wet timber and now the sort of misty rain. But it's, a, it's a challenge. As it's coming up to heat I'm going to add half a stock cube. It's worth checking it and stirring it occasionally. Um, just to see it's not burning and just see if you might need to add a bit more water um, which I think we're all right at the moment I'm going to attempt to make some flatbreads in this precarious tiny plate here and um, might be a bit of a struggle but we'll see it's just the ordinary damper bread mix but we'll just try and have a go at making something a little bit more perhaps eastern in the way of flatbreads. Yeah, I like to rub just a little bit of fat through the flour. It makes it a bit lighter. Now you attempt to add the right amount of water, which is rather tricky. Always worth holding some flour back in case you uh, overdo the water. Not so easy in a plate either. A tiny bit more water, methinks. Yep, it's like a sort of Play-Doh now and, and you can leave it to stand for a bit.
Yeah, the lentils are coming towards the end of their cooking time, but what's nice to do is just throw in a bit of coconut milk. This isn't the coconut oil that, um, it's not the coconut oil that you, that I use for frying and things. This is, uh, it's a combination of liquid and fat really, but um, it adds a nice creamy dal taste. A bit more cooking time there. I might just bring them down a bit more heat. So I'm just going to take the precarious tiny plate and I don't know if you can see it now, it's getting very dark. Put some coconut oil into it. And use it like some kind of a weird frying pan. I've had to resort to filming with the phone light on. Um, So that's the dal. It's um, I've tasted that. That's really quite nice. And the flatbread. Well, could do with a better. Could do with a better pan than um, a very thin, lightweight plate. Um, yeah, but it's it's a nice little side for the dal. Just gone half ten now, and the gusts have really picked up. There's lots of noises, cracks, and thuds around. Um, not very conducive to sleep, really. Well, as you can imagine, that was quite a disturbed night. Um, it got really gusty from about ten o'clock to about half past one, so sleeping was quite difficult. There's lots of cracking and thumping noises around, mainly over, mainly in front of the shelter, that way more. Um, seemed to be constantly, you know, every 20 minutes something would crash down o over there. I don't know how near they were, but um, yeah, it made for a pretty noisy night. Um, it was pretty cold as well because of the wind, although the temperature wasn't down, it was more the wind, such a sort of primitive setup as this. You know, basic shelter. The wind can whip around any which way it likes, really. So, so you are um, under the influence of the chilling factor of the wind, I suppose. So it it does feel quite cold sometimes in this this type of open shelter. Um, and then the um, the sticks ran out at about half past five. So I took down the uh, pot hanging tripod and cut that up just to just to see me through till dawn. 